It's viewer video request time, also simple tutorial time. This one, how to set up OpenBSD as an internet gateway and firewall system in a similar vein to the way I've got my Endian gateway set up. Let's get into it. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Well, before we get into this view of video requests and simple tutorial, I'm going to put something to rest because I've got a real bee up my bonnet about this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how many times I've got to say this and people do not listen. So we're going to put this issue to bed right here, right now. My son servers cannot run Linux. They are risk-based servers, aka reduced instruction set computing. They are not CISC, complex instruction set computing. They are RISC, they are Spark, Scalable Processor Architecture, which means I have to run Unix, U-N-I-X, Solaris by default, OpenBSD, and maybe, although untested properly, FreeBSD. My Sun servers can not run Linux. They are not Intel or AMD based servers. I don't know how many times I've been asked, I'll just run Linux, you'll be right. My Sun system can't. Not every computer around the world can run Linux or Mac OS, or Windows. It's only in recent history that Oracle have been able to run Linux on a Sun server that was not sun for you The code name for my entire Sun Microsystem server set up here is Ultra Spark for the uninitiated, Ultra Scalable Processor Architecture, Ultra Spark 4 Plus. It has to run Unix, U N I X. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of people saying, I'll oh, get rid of Unix, put Linux on your Sun servers. Linux doesn't run on Sun for you. I've tried Debian, it doesn't work. I've tried Deviant, it doesn't work. Gentoo, it doesn't work. It's Unix or nothing. <clears throat> it's frustrating because people always say, I'll oh, just put, you know, put Ubuntu on it or, 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 or something else like that. Um, Sun for you. Risk. Reduced instruction set computing. If you can use Linux, you can use Unix. If you can use the majority of Linux distros out there, you can use Unix. The, the syntax in the commands are pretty much the same. So, why is it people can't understand that Linux doesn't run on 100% of risk-based servers? In the dead set fed income department, I can't run, if I'm going to run Linux, I might as well ditch my sun equipment and go and get a HP DL 360. Why would I get rid of some pretty high-end sun equipment 
to go and get a cheap two hundred dollar second hand HP D or three sixty. What what advantage is that going to give me running OpenBSD? All right. So stop bugging me about running Linux on my Sun equipment. It does not run. I either run OpenBSD, I run Solaris, or I run um, OpenSXCE 2014.05. They're the only three I know run on the system. And frankly, I like OpenBSD to run my servers and my network. All right, now then, let's move on to this viewer video request. ECC, <coughs> sorry, EC443 uh, commented, I think it was on the Monday promo or something uh, from yesterday, um, wanting to know how to sort of go about setting up OpenBSD as a gateway firewall. Pretty much a similar vein to what I've got Indian running here. This comes down to a number of possible topologies available at the end user side of things, um, dependent on how or what's going to happen. The spanner is thrown into the cogs when you want to run a PDC-like environment inside or behind. Of say inside people start saying, well, just run Linux. The problem happens when you want to run a PDC-like environment on the LAN side of OpenBSD. <clears throat> now, I've been accused of doing double gateway here. That OpenBSD, I've got Indian, and then I've got OpenBSD being a gateway server. No. No, I haven't. OpenBSD runs my network. File sharing, packet filtering, DACP, DNS recursive resolvers, forward lookup zones, etc. However, you can set up OpenBSD as a standard firewall if you feel you need to. Now, if you are going to run OpenBSD in a work group environment, and I use the term work group loosely, then you would have um, OpenBSD plugged um, on the public side plugged into a modem or NTU and on the LAN side straight into a switch you would enable DHCP sys control PF and possibly unbound if you felt necessary now this is working on the assumption you are looking for a basic Unix firewall stop chewing my head off about Unix, but I'm getting very sick and tired of having my head chewed off about Unix. Okay. So, that's one way. The second way is to set up a complete firewall gateway system. I'll show you that in just a moment on the main PC. You have multiple, multiple systems and settings and blocks and everything that you can put into pf.conf in OpenBSD. Shut up, I know PF comes from PFSense, which is FreeBSD. Don't remind me of the obvious, please. Now, PF or Packet Filter is essentially their whole firewall setup inside BSD Unix. Okay. Now, PFSense, which is the firewall, uh, custom firewall system you can put onto um, PC or server, doesn't matter. PF obviously meaning packet filter. Now, most people know that. Inside PF.conf, you have your general uh, firewall rules, but then you can also block specific ports. You might want to block port. 53 coming in. You might want to block port 21 coming in, port 22 coming in. So you would put those rules 
into pf.conf sitting inside slash etc. The, the other thing too is you may want to set up DACP. Now if you're going to use it as a firewall that's going to handle DACP for your work group environment, so similar to what I've got here, you would then obviously need to put in an address on CAS1 or EM1 CAS1, your CAS or EM, depending on the server you're putting it on. Then you would obviously need to put in, you'd have to create a file inside ETC for the translation. Now, most people know what that is, which is net.inet.ip.forwarding equals one. That allows for NAT translation between. However, if you want to set up multiple networks, and you may have, say, a four-port card, or even a two-port card, plus the on-board card from the motherboard or system board or whatever you want to call it, and you are going to run two separate networks, then obviously you're going to have to decide your DACP systems either which way. You've still got to do your syscontrol, sysctl, and your pf.conf. And both of those, including the DACPD settings, and the host name settings are all held inside slash etc. Okay, so what's the difference between using OpenBSD against PFSense? Security. Also, personally speaking, I think OpenBSD is better for a server-like environment FreeBSD, I think, is better for a free, open-ended um, desktop, laptop, whatever-like environment. NetBSD is great for networking. But OpenBSD is where I sit. You guys all know I heavily rely on my OpenBSD to keep me both up and running as well as secure. Now we all know what OpenBSDs, you log in, the first thing you see is the proactive, secure Unix operating system. Unix-like, I should say. So, we all know that it's all a descendant from 386BSD, or PCBSD, whichever way you want to look at it. But, so I'm going to take you over to my system. Now, before you rip my head off, just to stop people chewing my head off about the fact I'm logging in as root, I will log in as a user. Because everyone chews my head off about logging in as root. And I don't see the problem when I'm sitting here at the desk doing my own thing, why I have to log in as a user, why I've got to follow the rules all the time. So I'm going to show you how I've sort of got mine sort of semi-set up and then how you would add rules. Now, the way I've done it, I can pretty much guarantee is not the right way of doing it. Um, but we all know I don't do things by the rules here. I never have in this industry. I've always done it my own way, and it's worked. Right, let's head on over to the main PC, and I will log into the V490 as a user for everyone to stop chewing my head off. All right. So, let me log in as a user to stop everyone going off tap at me by um, getting stuck into me that I'm doing everything as root when I should be doing it as a yes. Just wait a minute, I will enlarge it so you can all see because I get work complaints like there's no tomorrow that people can't see what I'm doing. Okay. I can't make it any bigger than that. Now, let me explain what you want to do. God, LS. Okay. So there's a few things you're going to want to look at if you're going to just set up a simple firewall using OpenBSD. Okay. If I can find it. You're going to need to have that to start with. You're going to need to have a WAN based NIC access and a LAN based NIC access. You're going to need that. And most importantly, you are going to need to configure that initially. 
There is something else you'll need to do, but we'll get to that shortly. So if you're running a simple, if you're going to run OpenBSD as a simple gateway system to put between, say, your work group of computers and your modem slash NTU, you will need a WAN, which obviously, as you know, you would set DACP, and then a LAN that you could use in combination with that, okay? All your security system, though, is done here, pf.conf. All right. Now, if you guys can't read this, stiff. Okay, so what we have here, all right, you have... Oh, no, I have got the block policy set dropped, so that's all right. So any bad packets get dropped straight away. The log interface is egress, so that's coming out of the system. You obviously want to set skip on local zero or local low, so, you know, 127.0.0.1. And what you've got here is you want pass in on CAS1 INET. So you want stuff that's coming in on CAS1 to get passed in. And you want to pass out quick on the INET, which would be anything. But your main, your main output would be this one here. Egress network. Now, I'm going to have to scroll over because most people complain when they can't read what's on the screen here. Okay, so you want pass out on egress network. And then you want NAT, NAT to egress CAS0. Meaning anything coming in on CAS1 gets shoved out to CAS0 and vice versa. But also in here... Now, I'm not going to do this because I've got, obviously my gateway but once you've done all this you would then set up your block ports you might say um for one of the term block port 21 block port 53 block port 22 from external meaning if someone tries to come in they can't get in because it's getting blocked so PF is basically what looks after everything. Now, before you all uh, go off tap at me and uh, crack the sads, um, I do know that PF comes from FreeBSD. And I do know that PF is available in FreeBSD. It is also available in NetBSD. In fact, it's pretty much the standard Unix firewall. Even MacOS runs it. Now, the other one that you're going to need to set up, all right? Now, we've set up DACP before, so we've done that. The other one you need to set up, especially for the gateway, Is this one okay Oop. now this is unbound this is your DNS system for the gateway okay this has to match everything on the internal side and the external side this is the DNS server for the LAN, the local area network, not the WAN. And one of the most important things, and I don't know that this will actually do it without cracking the SADs with me. Is your forwarder or recursive resolvers? Now you can see here at the moment I'm out on Google 
That is because I have a problem at the moment that I cannot fix because I don't have the brain power to fix it at the moment. But your forwarding address would be the DNS, the DNS system. Okay? Now, if you're running a modem, you would put the ISP's DNS in there. All right? If you're running an NTU, you put your IP's DNS into Unbound as the recursive resolver. Okay? It doesn't have to be Google. The only reason I'm using Google is because I've mucked up my DNS settings. So, basically, most of what you want to do for a simple gateway will be in here. So, you've got your, your two NICs, your syscontrol, your pf.conf, and your dacpd.conf. Now, obviously, once you've done all that, you then obviously have to do the standard RCCTL enable whatever it is um, you can start and stop them by going um, uh, RCC TL disable um, PF or DACPD or whatever if you need to make changes but basically that's what you need to set up a simple gateway now a more complicated gateway well, I can show you that in another video We'll see what else crops up during the day. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.